Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. Welcome back to the Spinner Rack, issue 20. This week we'll be discussing the previous Batman movies in light of the announcement of the new Batman earlier last week. As always, I'm your host, Big B. Brian Adams. Joining me this week, as usual... Junior, co-host the Comics Remixed. So, Junior, as we've seen in the last week, the internet has nerd-raged over the announcement of Ben Affleck being Batman. Now, before we really get into that, I kind of just wanted to touch on previous Batman films because they, in themselves, have also presented an amount of Nerd Rage. Didn't we do a Batman? Uh, you know, we did a movie General, and we kind of just glazed okay. over Batman. Like, it was in there, okay. but it wasn't specific. Okay. Gotcha. So, we, I really don't feel like we'll hit the points that we're going to hit today. Okay. So, 89 Batman, Michael Keaton. Uh, I was 13 years old. I didn't really give a shit that it was Michael Keaton. You were probably, what, what were you like? Dude, 89, I was six. Six? So, you didn't even really care? No, I was just like, holy shit, yeah. it's Batman. Exactly. And you, we Dude, that was, my, like, yeah. that was my first drive-in movie. Yeah? I remember going to see that at the drive-in. That's awesome. And I knew Jack Nicholson, like I knew who he was, and of course I knew the Joker from, because I was a big Batman Adam West fan, the mm-hmm. 66 show. So I'm watching it on screen, like, this is amazing, but why can't he turn his neck? <laughs> you know? That was the a, Batmobile alone was just... The Batmobile was awesome, man. The I don't Batmobile care how many awesome. Batmobiles there have been over the years. My favorite two are the 66 one. And the 89 one. And maybe coming in third is the uh, Batman animated series. Animated series? Yeah. I was going to say, my, my favorite is probably the animated series. And then I'd probably say 89, 66. Yeah. But, uh, you know, when they cast Michael Keaton in that original Batman movie, people were like, what the fuck? Mr. Mom? Yeah, right? Mr. He can't be Batman. Right. But as time shown, he, he pulled it off. I mean, he pulled it off for two movies. Yeah. Now, in retrospect, I... At, you know, I was 13 when that movie came out. I'm 37 now. It's not my favorite of the Batman films, but it, it's way better than some of the other ones that have been. It's, it's definitely better than the Schumacher Batman films. You know what? Like, I really after I saw the Batman, like I said, it was it was Batman to me. I was still young. I didn't understand the whole Michael Keaton can't be Batman thing. You know, I was just like, oh, cool, that guy's Batman. Um, my my thing was Beetlejuice. When I saw Michael Keaton and Beetlejuice, I at first, you know, like I said, I was still too young. I really realized it was Keaton. And I was like, wow, whoever that actor is is great. And then when I saw it was Michael Keaton, I was like, okay, now I see, like, the range, the acting range. Okay, that's probably why they cast him as Batman, you know? Not for, obviously, the Mr. Mom role. Beetlejuice, dude, I love that movie. But no, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't see the big, oh, Michael Keaton, so I wasn't really a part of that. Now, as I got older, was, it ba- was Batman Forever the next movie? Batman Returns. The no, I, after the Keaton. Oh yeah, yeah, Batman. I'm Forever. totally. I, I feel like we're not going to so much talk about the movies themselves. Yeah. As I want to just talk about who they cast the as Batman. Okay, so then it was Val Kilmer in Batman Forever. It was Batman Forever, wasn't that? Yeah. That's right, because Batman, Batman Robin was Okay. Yeah. So, Val Kilmer, weird choice. For Very weird. I felt like he had that pretty boy, playboy aspect that Bruce Wayne needed. Yeah. Even though I don't really feel like we played on that. He had the look as far as, like, if you want to compare it to the animated series, how uh, they gave it the Bruce, Bruce Tim treatment, so to speak, where Bruce Wayne had the uh, the square jaw. Right, right. Like, Michael Keaton was a great Bruce Wayne. He was a good Batman. But his body physically was, I think he was too small. Whereas Val Kilmer at that time looked like he was in his prime. He was in shape. He had the square jaw line. I'm like, okay, I can see it. He had the physicality to be a Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and again, leading up to the Ben Affleck thing, I would have to almost say, I might even be getting ahead of myself here with what I'm about to say, but it's not always the actor. You know, you can't really sit there and, and blame George Clooney for a shitty Batman movie or Val Kilmer. It's the director and definitely the script. Case in point, Ben Affleck in Daredevil. He did a pretty damn good job. You know, I, I'm a big, I hate Daredevil. Fuck the big words. I'm just going to say, I hate Daredevil. <laughs> ah, I already owe the, the jar a quarter. That was the first F-bomb. I told you I wasn't good. I can't, what's that guy's name? Who? Uh, he's a buddy of yours. I, he we, commented on how you were really positive and the rest of us were really negative and said we swear too much. Lou, uh, Lou Bernal. Lou Bernal. I told him that I was going to issue a challenge to myself to try not to swear. Did you really? I did. <laughs> and I, like, we're not even five minutes into this new show, and I totally <laughs> dropped the ball already. 
Well, I'll but swear uh, for you. We gotta invite him in here for for our spinner rack. He's a big fan of it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Oh, yeah. Lou, you hear that? You're you're welcome to come join us on spinner rack one day. Absolutely. We'll do a toy one again for you. Anyways, but uh, Val Kilmer. So, no Daredevil. Okay, Daredevil. We're at Daredevil. I wasn't a fan of Daredevil, like I said in the movie one. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand why they blew CGI money on a rat in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. But you, that's not Ben Affleck. Exactly. That's producers, directors. Exactly. Decision. That's exactly. not Ben Affleck. Now, while I don't think Ben Affleck's... He just looked weird in the Daredevil costume. The costume itself was weird. And maybe that was it. Because it was, it was basically red leather pants, a red leather jacket... And then some deformed looking mask that didn't even cover his neck. It's just kind of like a shower cap that hung a little bit too low. It was like an unattached cowl. Yeah. It was just weird. Like, not even a cowl, really. Almost like a Viking helmet that was was made of leather and red. Yeah, it was awkward. And they made a lot of bad casting decisions in that movie. Now, one of the casting decisions I didn't think was bad, since this is pretty much really what the topic is about, Ben Affleck being cast as Batman and casting decisions. I liked Michael Clark Duncan as the Kingpin. Yeah. Now, at first, I was like, what the hell? A black guy can't be the Kingpin. The Kingpin was a big, fat, bald, white guy. I'd make a better Kingpin than, you know, Michael <laughs> Clark Duncan. But he did good, man. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't even fault the cast in that movie. It's the script. No? It was the script that made it so bad. I they crammed way too much story into this movie. They did. They, they tried was to too many a lot characters. Of, uh, you had the Daredevil versus Bullseye. You had the Daredevil versus Elektra. You had Bullseye versus Elektra. Daredevil versus Kingpin. It was way too much. They tried to tell the Guardian Devil storyline somewhat, mixed in because of the Kevin Smith aspect. Right, right. Mixed in with Matt's personal demons, mixed in with the Frank Miller story, and it was just way... Mixed in with Fall from Grace. Dude, that was right where I was going when you started this. You know, it's... We're we're on the same mind. It's awesome. But, uh, yeah, no, they did. They They tried to squeeze way too much into it. I didn't feel like that Jennifer Garner should have been Electra. It didn't bother me. I feel like they should have went with someone more of the Asian persuasion, I guess. But I guess she wasn't Asian, was she? I've always assumed Electra was was Oriental. No. I don't know what she was. But I think in the movie they said she was I believe she was, she Greek. was Greek. She was Greek. So whatever. I guess I, I don't can't. think it was bad. Um I've heard the directors, a lot of people that I've talked to about Daredevil, and I've been like, oh, I hate that movie, it's so terrible. They've said, watch the director's cut. I was just going to tell you that. That it's way better. It's only like an extra five minutes, Yeah. but for some reason, those extra five minutes kind of flesh out the movie a little bit more, and it's like, you know what, that wasn't too bad. But then, of course, there's the director's cut to Elektra, and then there's the Elektra movie, and you're just like, eh. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of the Electra movie. Nobody was. was. You have to have. You have to watch that movie as a movie in its own right. You can't be like, "Oh, that's Electra." Like, no, it's just like you have to say it's a character named Electra, but it's not actually Electra. Right, but you got to be careful with that because then the same thing. Well, it's a character named Catwoman. It's really not Catwoman. That was Halle Berry Catwoman. Yeah, Yeah, that was that was horrible. Yeah. So Val Kilmer kind of had to look Batman. You could see why they did it. I don't think there was as much of. uh, a negative fan reaction to that. I don't remember there one being. No, because Val Kilmer was still relatively new. He had made a few movies. He wasn't as uh, big, I guess, as Michael Keaton was when he made Batman. Yeah, probably not. You know, he was he was that up and coming guy. Like the Batman movie really could have made his career. It could have really just you know threw him into the stratosphere there. Well, I really think Michael. I really think Val Kilmer already had a built-in career. Though. I mean, you got You're forgetting Willow. Willow was a huge movie in the 80s. Val Kilmer was in Willow. You, you see the, the irony on that, right? Willow was a big movie. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> Seeing as that Willow was of little stature. Right? You know what? Yeah, he was in Willow, but... Real geniuses. He had some movies. Yeah, I guess you're right. He's not like... Batman he wasn't really super star like right. Michael Keaton. He was, was big, but he wasn't like... Yeah, he was exactly. He wasn't superstar status. Batman franchise could have launched his career to who knows where. So, since we're talking now about Batman Forever, casting choices, how did you feel about the villains of that movie? What were the villains? Riddler and Two-Face, right? I had read reportedly that they were trying to get Robin Williams for the Riddler. Okay. I feel like Robin Williams would have been a way better Riddler than Jim Carrey, had it been a completely different movie. (laughs) Yeah. 
<laughs> I think <laughs> once again, it's not the casting; it's, it's the script. It's the script. The script. You know, it's how bad. you portray an act. A great actor portrays the character the way you know, like okay, they read the character. This is how the character is supposed to be. That's how I'm going to portray the character. So you have what to go on the script. The script obviously sucked. First of all, you added neon to Gotham. Right. Why would you do that? It's yeah, supposed it's, to be dark and gritty. Yeah, right. And, and it, it's all of a sudden it's very neon. I, I feel like uh, for a long time I blamed Joel Schumacher. It is his fault. Him and well, the writer. Five, ten years ago, it might have been less than that. Within the last decade, Joel, Ma- Joel Schumacher has come out and basically like... I know I, he's apologized. I guess he's had enough yeah. of the shit talk about his Batman movies. And he really said that the decisions on a lot of the direction and the look of those films were taken out of his hands. I've heard that. And it was more the producer's push mm-hmm. to make it more... It was a special feature. More like, was an interview more like with Batman, him. the TV Where show from the 60s. It? Oh, man. It, it might have been on the Dark Knight Blu-ray special feature. I'm not sure. I remember seeing interviews with Schumacher recently saying, you know, you know, this was because they did it, defending his choices in the Batman movie and stuff. But at the same time as a director, you know, you do have that... You're putting your name on it. If you knew it was a bad decision, yeah, it's a payday, but how many people would have respected you more for walking away from something you thought was going to be Pull a donner. You know, exactly. Pull a donner. We're in the middle of Superman 2. These producers want me to do stupid shit that I don't want to do. Fuck you, I'm out. Right. Damn. You know? I mean, I get the money's there, and then, of course, there's contracts and stuff like that, but, you know, why add me on to Gotham? Why put Whoever, nipples, whoever's decision it was. Why put nipples the on the bad nipples? Suit. And then, okay, you can't, you cannot, he can't, fight his way out of this one. The director, one of their main things is, okay, I want the camera from this angle. I want it from this angle. What's up with when they were suiting up, they always zoomed in on the ass. You notice that? And on the back crotch. What is that? That that, was a Schumacher call. Was that... Now, was that in... Uh, It was in Batman and Robin. I don't know if it was in Batman Forever. I think it might have been in Batman Forever... But it continued over to Batman. Right? Like every time they would suit up, it's just a zoom right like there. And it would butt. be like weird, like twisty ass yeah, shots like, and stuff. It was very homoerotic, <laughs> to say the least. But uh, you know, and we all know Tommy Lee Jones, hell of an actor, dude, amazing actor. Hell yes, amazing. Look at his role as Two Face, horrible. But then again, like I said, you play the role that is. Excuse me. That's that's given to you. You know, this is who Two Face is. This is the character we want. Right. You play it how it's presented to exactly. you. Exactly. And it was presented as a neo, like a neon fucking weirdo. It was. It was presented like a '66, like an update of the '66 Batman yeah. Batman show, really. And the problem with the Riddler was that was, I, in my opinion, we can't bring Jack Nicholson back as the Joker. That's been done. So why don't we kind of give that role? If you really think about it. Jim Carrey's role as the Riddler was more Joker esque than it was Riddler. It was too comedy. Riddler is not that. like that. Riddler is let well, me sit back and play mind games with you. Riddler should have been the the villain from Saw. Is the fucking Riddler totally? You know totally. I think that was that's what you're saying about Jim Carrey's Riddler is actually one of the problems I had is Nicholson as the Joker is that. I know that Israel disagreed with me on this. I remember this conversation, yeah. That uh, the, the Jack is the Joker. Right. I disagree. For me, watching that movie now, at 13, awesome. Yeah, of course. I couldn't say anything wrong about it. Because the only person you... Right. But then again, you got to look at the time frame. Back then, Jack Nicholson was the Joker. Why? You only had two other Joker, One Joker. To yeah, Cesar Romero. Cesar Romero. <laughs> now you have Cesar Romero. Hell, they throw Mark Hamill into the mix. They even do though throw physically into the it mix. wasn't Mark it was the voice. Right. But people recognize Mark Hamill as one of the essential jokers. Then you also have Jack Nicholson, you've got Heath Ledger and whoever else has betrayed the Joker over the years, which I think pretty much covered it all right there. Yeah. Pretty much. And you know, everybody's saying, you know, Nicholson was the best, no Ledger was the best. They were both good for different reasons, you know. I, 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 I just sat back and watched Dark Knight again on uh, Thursday night. I watched it. I think that puts a lot into the time, but I still feel like Jack was playing Jack as the Joker. Yeah, I see. He what wasn't you mean. being the. There was too many. Like if you go back and watch Jack Nicholson films, yeah, there was way too much Nicholson in the Joker mm-hmm. versus, unlike Ledger's performance, where he just became fucking something else. Yeah, because if you look at Ledger's past movies. You know that that is an example of what I was saying earlier. When a great actor puts themselves into the role, like if imagine 
if they if Batman Forever would have come out today, and Tommy Lee Jones would have been Two Face, but with a Christopher Nolan script, can you imagine how sadistic Two Face would have been? It would be great. You know, not whatever the hell that was we got in Dark Knight, which well, I have no problem with. Well, that's again, I think that's another problem with superhero movies in general. Not to get too much off topic here, but hey, we we got enough time. Cramming. Is like cramming that. too many villains into one movie when these villains could carry a whole movie. Like Two Face, in my opinion, that's a guy that deserves a whole movie. Oh yeah, you don't give his fucking almost all of like those the whole movie. Almost all of those roles, maybe one or two. Like Killer Croc, you could put him in with somebody else because he could be somebody's heavy. Yeah. Maybe Killer Croc and the Riddler. You know, he'd be he'd be Riddler's muscle or something. That's a different story. But yeah, Two Face definitely his own movie. The Joker, of course, his own movie. I like. I'm a fan. A lot of people now that it's been oh, what about two a year and a half, two years now since Dark Knight Rises, uh-huh. about a year now. People look back. You know, Bane wasn't as good as I thought he was. I thought he was great. I liked Bane. It was different. It wasn't. I mean, how? Come on. Would you have bought I'm an ex luchador on crack? Yeah, it's. You know, it's. You got to remember these movies. Well, are I think that's, more that's, to the. Yeah, that's that's like another thing that I've had discussion with one of the fans on Comics Remix Facebook page about is how these movies aren't made to appease us. Because realistically, how many the fuck are... Damn it. How many of them <laughs> are there of right. us? I mean, a good comic sells what? Maybe 50,000 copies if it's lucky? Okay. Maybe, am I giving it a little much? I mean, you work yeah. in the retail of it, so I don't really know. But that's that's about right, like 50, 50, 50 60. 50,000 comics would be Avengers versus AVX number one, how big that was. Okay. You know, everybody just waiting for it. You know, so, but so the average high selling comic does what? 50, 20, 30,000. 20 or 30. Yeah. Okay. So, if they go out and Hollywood makes a movie based, through, like, come on. Yeah. Like, if you're spending 200, 250 million dollars to make a movie for 30,000 people, you're going to have to charge those 30,000 people a hell of a lot of money to make that 250 back. Oh, yeah. So, you've got to, like, venture out and make it more acceptable. You helped me kind of broaden my opinion of superhero movies the last time we were talking about. I mean, it's true. Yes, you do have your hardcore fanboys, you know, especially the ones that, you know, like, if, great example, not, not to get off top, Man of Steel. You know, so many people, that's a great movie where the audience is 100% divided. You've got, the, you've got, oh, I absolutely loved it, or I hated it, Superman doesn't kill. Now, Mark Wade, who we all know is no secret, is a huge, uh, I'm a huge fan of his, has honestly finally broken his silence, come out and said, that's not Superman, Superman does not kill. Now that doesn't change my mind just because somebody I admire said that it's, right. it's yeah. okay. I mean, Superman doesn't kill, but then it, you know it goes back again the argument in Superman two, totally, and it goes back to the times. You gotta roll with the times, absolutely. You know, you look in the, the decision that Superman was in, the position he was in. I'm Kryptonian. This guy's Kryptonian. I've only been Superman for like fucking five minutes. I really I don't know what I'm doing yet. I'm bound to make mistakes. Rookies make mistakes. And this guy's about to kill this whole family. Are you going to sit there as Superman and let this family die? Or are you going to do something to stop it? And, you know, for all we know, like we said, we're all jumping to conclusions. The second movie might deal with the fa- the emotional fallout. Superman sitting there like, you know, the, super- the second movie might suck. It might just be a big emo fest of, oh, you know, I let all this destruction happen in Metropolis. And all these people died because of me. No more. Blah, blah, blah. Nobody knows what they're going to do. I Bottom line. And you, people can fight with me all day on this, and I don't care. I will never change my thought on it. You're getting a superhero movie based off of... You're getting a Superman movie, okay? They could have not given us any more Superman movies, and we would have been stuck with Superman Returns. Right. Be glad you're getting a new Superman movie. If the movie... And this goes to anybody who's listening that is sitting there saying, you know, this is not how it should be. This is how it should be. I'm a hardcore. You know, Superman doesn't kill. Go make the movie yourself. Plain and simple. If you want, they, you know how they say, if you want something done right, do it yourself. Otherwise, sit back, shut up, and enjoy the fact you're getting a movie. Right. You know, it obviously got to you if you're going to sit there and you were going to constantly talk about it, whether you liked it or hated it, you're still talking about it. You just, you're promoting the movie and you already paid. They don't care whether you liked it or hated it. If you liked it, the only thing that means is they're going to green light another one. Right. And you'll buy the DVD. And you'll buy the damn <laughs> home release anyway. Or even if you're one of those that, you know, I don't buy movies, I, I download everything. Guess what? You're still taking the time to download it. Just be glad yeah, you're getting the damn no, movie. I absolutely agree. You know? So to real quick move on, the last Batman movie before Bale, George Clooney, 
Had the look, definitely. I felt definitely like the Playboy. He had the look. The Bruce. It was, it was a little bit more too comedic. Yeah, absolutely. The time. I was like, all right, the neon was funny in the sense that this is, doesn't need to be there. But by the fourth movie, when Clooney came on board, it was just like, all right, it's overkill. Yeah, it's way too. Candy. It was full on Batman sixty six. Dude, Batman sixty six was more serious. Yeah, totally. You know, <laughs> I mean, nothing against Clooney because we all know Clooney's a hell of an actor as well. You know? and then you get but Clooney is one of those actors, unfortunately, that plays Clooney in every movie. Yeah, he's like Keanu Reeves in a way. Right. Where Keanu Reeves plays this, and, and not Nicolas that I Cage. don't, not that I don't like Keanu Reeves. Right. But and, Keanu Reeves, Keanu Reeves never really plays. Same thing with Nicolas Cage. Yeah. You know, it's like they're great actors in a sense. I I use the word great with very with some disdain when talking about Keanu Reeves, but for Nicolas Cage, Nicolas Cage is, Cage is a hell of an actor. But he plays Nicolas Cage in every movie he's in. Absolutely. You know? So, with George Clooney, he's the same way. It just fit, his personality fit with Bruce Wayne. And not the Bruce Wayne brooding type, but the Bruce Wayne playboy, uh, just out there, you know? So it fit. Uh, I I got why. I mean, bottom line, another they, they, put, they make these characters and... Accessible to kids. Absolutely. They throw all these extra characters in the movie, not only because fans want to see them, but to sell toys, more yeah. toys. The, they've learned from they've learned from Grandpa George. Oh yeah. George Lucas taught us all well on that. Uh, oh yeah. You got him. You got a merchandise, merchandising, merchandising, merchandising. <laughs> Man, and then some. <clears throat> now moving on to the Nolan trilogy. Okay. I don't really feel the need to like since, like I said, we're really just talking about actors. Christian Bale, man had a lot to bring to the role. Yes, he did. I felt like a lot of people hate those movies. And I kind of look at them to a degree to where I don't really consider them. Like, they're Batman movies. They're but, totally standalone. But they're kind of, yeah, you can't put them you know why? in a these, DC universe. No, because these movies were grounded in reality. Yeah, absolutely. That was the thing. There was no campiness to it. There was no comic book attitude. And the fact that it was actually filmed, the city was Chicago, our city, but it was more of, okay, we don't have to build sets with weird looking buildings. Right. You don't have to do the weird architecture. Right, right. This was, like I said, it was grounded it in It was reality. real world. It was. Uh, I thought Bale was good, man. Uh, I like Bale. He had the look. Any he, problems I have with Bale are strictly nitpicking. <laughs> well, besides the voice. <laughs> that was really weird. <laughs> Which I really didn't even notice until Dark Knight. How horrible the voice was! And, you didn't uh, notice it in the first movie when Rachel Dawes gets off the subway. He saves her, and he's sitting there. And he hands her the picture. He's like, "Do you Frank?" Yeah. Like, I mean, what? I, I noticed that right away. But it wasn't the horrible of this. Didn't really come until the awesomeness of Heath Ledger as the Joker showed up. Yeah. And then Bale's Batman looked really, really poor. Somebody pointed it out in uh, Dark Knight Rises. When uh, Catwoman and Batman are on the rooftop and they're fighting, and then uh, he says something, he turns around and Catwoman's gone. He goes, "Oh, so that's what that feels like." And it's like, dude, you're by yourself. Why would you just say it in your regular voice? <laughs> you know, totally, totally. It's like, man, that guy's got Batman's got commitment to character, dude. Yeah. So on to last week's reveal: Ben Affleck is Batman. Uh, all right. To be fair, I woke up to the news. Uh, it was all over social. It was announced what Thursday, late eve, early evening. Yeah. I wasn't on Facebook or anything like that. I was completely off the grid. Thursday, I was relaxing. Um, Friday morning came. I rolled over, checked my phone. I've got like forty something notifications on Facebook. I was like, "Whoa! Somebody's giving stuff away. What's going on?" And I looked. My entire feed is nothing but Ben Affleck memes. I'm like. What? And I'm like still rubbing the sleep out of my eye, and my daughter's asleep, and I'm trying not to overreact and wake her up. And I'm just like, wait, 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 wait. Let me roll over, sleep for five minutes. I'll come back. Maybe I'm just still asleep, and I'm not really. You're just dreaming. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> out of all the choices, Ben Affleck, really? But then it's like, okay, Warner Brothers wanted him to direct Justice League, mm -hmm. but he pulled out of that <clears throat> for the reason I don't know. It makes me wonder how they got him for Batman. They throw enough zeros at anybody. I guess right? so. But you know, know, they got to see something, or maybe Ben just because you know. Hey, no offense to Ben Affleck. The choice of Ben Affleck as Batman is weird to say the least, because it was somebody you don't expect, totally out of left field. You know, that's just like saying, 
you know, hey, the, the role of Wolverine is no longer going to be Hugh Jackman. It's going to be A-Rod. You yeah. know, you're just going to be like, what? So it was completely out of left field. No pun intended there. But um, when you really sit back and think about it, Ben Affleck's a damn good actor. He th- That's when my initial shock at, like, oh, my God. And then I thought to myself, well, wait a second. I kind of like Ben Affleck. Right. I just, I can't see him he's, as that. He's man. talented. But that's one of those things you have to wait and he's, see. Uh, yeah, absolutely. He's a good writer. He's a good director. Yeah. He's won. Did you see Argo? He's won Oscars. No, my mother was like, have you seen Argo? And everyone told me to see Argo. Yeah. But I, I come back to what many people don't realize. When you first think Affleck and a superhero, you think Daredevil. Yeah. But he also played George Reeves. In yes, that's right. And that, that movie was, an was great. Excellent movie. It was, an, and his portrayal of George Reeves was fucking awesome. Yeah, I it forgot awesome. about that movie. Was badass. Oh, so, yeah. I kind of he played like that asshole from Fashionable Male. The asshole. That's my favorite <laughs> meme, dude. Did you hear who's new Batman? No, who that dick from Fashionable Male? That's my favorite meme. <laughs> but uh, so I really feel like it's it's a time will tell thing. Oh, definitely. Got to give definitely. You got to give him this chance. I mean, I also, I'm not sure if there's any truth to this or not. I saw someone post that they signed up to 13. 13 appearances. 13 appearances. Yes. And then, um, but you know what? At the same time, yeah, give him a chance. But look at the last, the, like we just said, the Batman trilogy, Nolan. Nolan knows what he's doing. Everybody loved the Batman trilogy. The Man of Steel was hit or miss, depending who you ask. Yeah. Zack Snyder, David Goyer, and Chris Nolan are all involved in is this Nolan movie. Involved yes, in he is involved Batman? in this movie. Yes, he is. So it's like, okay, all three of these char- um, these people are involved in this movie. You don't think four movies already, they don't know what they're doing? Oh, yeah, I have... I have. So if they cast Ben Affleck, there's a reason. I mean, one, it's one thing for Warner Brothers to go to maybe a smaller director and be like, look, this is who we want, you're going to put him in. But when you have the success rate that right. Nolan, Goyer, and Snyder have already. Totally. They could easily just be like... They could be like... They no. could tell Warner Brothers to go fuck themselves. Like, We're we not want, doing it. We want Carl Urban. Yeah. That's my choice for Batman. But no. I was really hoping for a Carl Urban Batman. I don't know why. Carl Urban. Sounds familiar. He, uh, he was Yomer in Lord of the Rings. He was Judge Dredd. He was Dr. Okay. McCoy from okay. the Star Trek okay. movies. Okay. Oh, he was McCoy? That was him? I just yeah. watched Star Trek yesterday. The guy's versatile, man. Yeah. The guy is ver- he's a good I'll actor. Say. He's young. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, I kind of feel like I'm hoping that they're trying to wag the dog mm-hmm. with the mentioning of Dark Knight Returns lines. Okay. And Superman and Batman fighting. And I'm really hoping what we're going to get here is from Affleck as a more seasoned Batman who's going to train Superman to be the hero. He has that would be pretty cool. Be. I've had customers come in and be like, man, I hope it's not a versus fight, you know, for a versus movie. Like, it's going to be. Not maybe, not, of course, not the whole movie, but, you know, maybe it starts off like as a prequel to Man of Steel, too, you know, where Superman falling, you know, oh, what do I, you know, how do I, how do I continue? What now? What comes next? You know, all this destruction, and then Batman coming out of nowhere and be like, "You left Metropolis to fall into ruins. I must destroy you now." And then they fight, and then Batman sees that he was actually trying to do good, and then he mentors him, and you know, who that knows? That would be awesome. Who knows? And it would be a whole fresh, different take on fucking Batman and Superman. But then you're going to have your hardcore man. That's not the Superman Batman relationship. Yeah, but fuck, you know what? Who are they to say that? Yeah. DC just relaunched two years ago. Yeah. So who's to say that you have to take everything? I mean, if the hardcores want to bitch about that, then the hardcores probably. The hardcores that probably like to wear the Batman. Yeah. Where's their bitch on that? You know, because boy, that's not, a big, huge reboot. One for thing that has not been said that I really need to say, because nobody's ever said this, at least to my knowledge. People are like, "Oh, that's not how it is in the comics. That's not how it is in the comics." Guess what? Those are the comics. That's the comic universe. This is a movie universe. You have two separate entities here. Absolutely. You can do whatever the fuck you want with the movies. You know, the comics are still going to keep rolling. The movies are the movies. That's their own, that's their own thing. universe. Exactly. No one was that judgmental of Batman the Animated Series. And in my opinion, Batman the Animated Series is one of the greatest... Cartoons. Just the, the in greatest interpretations of the character outside of the comic medium. Mm-hmm. The way they introduced the villains. I mean, it was great. The storytelling was great. For a kid's cartoon, that was just... You know, one thing I noticed top. about it? A lot of cartoons 
when the characters are talking, you hear background music to like every single like one cartoon in particular. I really, really picked up on. No surprise, Ninja Turtles. My daughter's hooked on this one specific episode where the turtles turn into five year olds, so she's fucking hooked on it. But there's like certain scenes when every time the villains came on, you had specific background music. Whenever Splinter was talking, you had specific background music. With the Batman animated series, there was times where there was no music at all. And it just seemed like if there was, you know, supposed to be an empty office, like maybe Gordon's at the office late night and a villain's going to come crashing through the window. All you hear is Gordon walking on the floor. You hear the fan maybe twirling. You hear every little sound effect. Like if you're in the room right now and it's quiet, that's what you hear. You don't hear, it's, it was so different. It was ahead of its time is what the hell it was. It was awesome. Batman the Animated Series is one of the best cartoons in our era. And, and, and when I say our era, I mean anywhere. And, and, you know, obviously you got some years on me, but I say any cartoon, the, the true cartoon era, in my opinion, started in the 80s with Masters of the Universe. Once Masters of the Universe came, then your G.I. Joe was shortly after. Then you had Transformers, and then Thundercats, and all the, I don't know the specific orders, but there. then Turtles was the late 80s, and then, you know, the X-Men in the 90s, Spider-Man animated in the 90s. Batman animated series, you know, and even the Superman animated series was, was pretty good. good. Yeah, I hate how it ended, but it was still good, you know. And it's just like okay, and so in that era, easily, but top five Batman, top five, maybe even top three. My easily, I, I agree. So in wrapping things up, I just want to say one last thing. I think one of the things that softened me to the most. I got to interrupt you real quick. We were talking Go about. Ahead. Um, how uh, Mark Hamill, we included him in the right, conversation right. with the Joker. So where would you put Kevin Conroy? Dude, Kevin Conroy, in my opinion, is the quintessential voice of the Batman. So it's like, don't you think with maybe the Nolan trilogy, they should have had Bale's mouth move, but Kevin Conroy did the voiceover? Okay, dude, that would have been <laughs> awesome. Like, I hope, if anything, Ben Affleck like goes and hangs out with Conroy, and Conroy teaches him how to do a solid Batman voice. I will give Affleck credit. He's a big comic guy. And he's the he wants to see these movies do. He wants them to succeed. He's the type of guy though. His ego is not big enough for too big. Where he's going to be like, you know yeah, what? Totally. I want to do this character. He's going to be like, I'm going to suck at this character. I'm not going to do it. I can't do the character justice. He's got at least the personality. Well, he will admit that, and he'll. And, back and he's off points with Kevin answer. Smith, and hopefully Smith will steer him in the right direction if he sees that he's going off the wrong. Yeah, no shit. But no one one last thing before we wrap. The one thing that also softened my opinion of all this, Brian Cranston. Lex, Lex Luthor. Luthor for 10 appearances. Holy shit, that's going to be awesome. It's funny, it's Malcolm in the Middle's dad. I know, right? I would have never thought that Malcolm in the Middle's dad, never in my life would have been like, dude, that guy's going to be an awesome Lex Luthor. Yeah. But man, after his performance in Breaking Bad, and I know some people are afraid that they're going to see him as Luthor and not going to be able to separate Walter White from Lex Luthor, but I think that he's going to give us the Lex Luthor that we have deserved. Right. I'm not trying to... I liked Gene Hackman... But Gene Hackman wasn't really Lex Luthor, man. No, my Lex Luthor, in my opinion, I'm sorry, Michael Rosenbaum. Smallville. Mixed with a little bit of the animated series Lex Luthor. Right on. You know, that was that was Luthor to me. But God, that's got me excited. Yeah. I cannot I, I cannot even care that Ben Affleck's gonna be Batman, because Cranston's gonna be in that movie and his Lex is gonna be the shit. Did you hear though, but because Ben Affleck is involved, they're trying to find a role for Matt Damon. <sighs> and not as Robin, which everybody's joking about with the memes. Uh in that same, actually, I posted it where uh, the Huffington Post reported that Cranston was going to be uh, yeah. Luther. They're saying that the possible role for Matt Damon is either Martian Manhunter or Aquaman. I could see Damon as Aquaman. Yes, as an angry Aquaman, dude. For anybody who thinks Matt Damon can't pull it off, go watch the Bourne trilogy. Totally, not to be a dude is wicked when it comes to Martian Manhunter. They really need to give that to a black guy. Totally, like Idris Elba. Would be a fucking awesome Martian Manhunter, yes. dude. Hell awesome yeah. Martian yes. Manhunter. And I know that might sound racist name. because, no. oh, it's a black guy. He's going to put him in makeup? No, I'm not being racist. He's just, that guy would be awesome. This he, Martian he's Manhunter. got the look, his presence, and his fucking voice, man. He was freaking awesome in Pacific Rim. Was he? I haven't seen it. Pacific Rim was awesome. He's he's, he's a, a great actor, dude. He really is. He really is. There's, I, I, can't, I can't argue with you that. Man. But the question everybody's going to wonder is, Who's Wonder Woman? Who do you yeah, get that's, Wonder Woman? That's going to be a hard one. And you know what? Flash, give it to Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, he was, seriously, yeah. He was Green Lantern, yes. But hey, Chris Evans 
was Human Torch, right. and now he's Captain. Right. People, exactly. People can forget about it and accept him as Captain America. So why can't you forget about Ryan Reynolds as Green Lantern? Absolutely. Especially if you're gonna re, re if you're redoing this franchise. Yeah, they're not. They're, as from what I've read, there's no intentions of carrying any of the canon from the Green Lantern film exactly. into the new Dude, DC. Dude, please. Colossal Ryan Reynolds universe. is meant to play Flash. He is, absolutely. And man. he's meant to play Deadpool. I'm sorry. He's the Flash. He's got, he's got to be Flash. Which Flash? Wally or Barry? Uh, see, you know... Because isn't Barry the more serious type? Barry is more serious, and Wally is more of the Joker. But this could be a good opportunity. Now, Barry does quip a little. I would think Not they'd almost do it... Not Wally does. I think they'd almost do it to Barry. they give it to Barry. Especially because of the new 52 relaunch, they want uh, yeah, the fans totally. to come in. I think it would be a good opportunity to take the chance and let Ryan Reynolds be a little more serious. And he can do it. And he can do it. He can definitely do it. What, um, What's that guy's name from... Uh, the guy that's been voicing Green, Green Lantern and all the animated stuff? I can't remember his name. He's the guy from Firefly. He's on uh, Nathan Philly. Okay. That guy should be Green Lantern, dude. He has gotten the look. Yeah, I don't know if you know who I'm talking about. It's, it's, it sounds it's Captain weird. from Firefly. He's on... Uh, damn, he's got a new show. On like ABC or NBC. I can't remember what it's called, though. Castle. Okay. I don't know if you know. Okay, yeah, 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 we got a comment. That guy, dude, he's just got the look, man. Yeah. He's got like the jaw. He's he would look good in the mask, dude. Now he's not going to have that crazy ripped body like how you know uh shit I forgot his name now. Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds had in the original Green Lantern movie. But is that really necessary? CGI. Is Green Lantern really all that like ripped of a dude anyway? And you just kind of you know it depends on the suit. You just airbrush the suit a little mm-hmm. bit. You know, you'd be fine. So. For our Batman casting discussion. What do you guys think? We want to know. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of you are going to say hate Ben Affleck right. or just wait and see. We're, I think we collectively are of the mind just wait and see. Yeah. I have not seen one person, though, just say, yes, Ben Affleck. It's either wait and see or God know why the apocalypse is upon yeah. us. Everyone's been like, wait. Yeah, that's, that's all it's been. It's the same with Man of Steel. You love it or you hate it. Yeah. Ben Affleck is Batman. Wait and see or ah. Yeah. <laughs> so, we'll see check us out at comicsremix.com. Check us out on Facebook. Go well, search Comics Remix. I'm not sure what the exact page is. If you go to com- basically, man, Comics like Remix. Comics Remix. is the hub. Com- it's the hub. It takes you to our social media. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. There's links. You could. Uh, it'll link you to past convention photo. Uh, photo. Uh, pictures. <laughs> you can watch past episodes of Comics Remix. You can wa- listen to past issues of Spinner Rack. You could, uh, if you go on Facebook, you'll be able to read uh, comic book reviews by myself and by Brian. Uh, we're both on there doing comic reviews, more so Brian lately than me. Um, hitting it hard, son. Hitting it hard. It's all good, man. I'm a busy guy. Uh, so It's a pleasure to take over. You know, hey, we're, we're all about the fan interaction, so let us know. If you guys have any ideas, you know, any topics that you feel we should discuss here on the Spinner Rack, please feel free to email us at comicsremix at gmail.com. Or, uh, what's the other one? Spinner Spin rack? at ymail.com. Has anybody, even, has anybody ever emailed never, you? Never. You might as well just close that down. I, I gotta keep it open for the, the web service. <laughs> for the, uh, the podcast server. So, uh, just go ahead. Let iTunes. Us know. Yeah, download us on iTunes. I keep forgetting we're on iTunes. So, yeah, go ahead, check us out. If you get um, us on iTunes, rate us. Please. Help us out. Uh, just stay tuned. We've got a, we've got so much planned. Uh, that we just cannot discuss right now. We're constantly going through changes, updating stuff. The brand know. is growing. Yes, pretty much. So stay tuned with us. Um, if you feel the need to debate and you feel we've said something that has offended you and you just, I hate those bastards, I got to defend this, <laughs> hey, let us know and we'll bring you and we'll put you on the show. And you, you can sit here right with us because you know as exciting as this is, me swing off, swinging off this office chair here and, you know, Brian staring at the computer on the stool. Come and we will put you on the show with us and we will debate whatever topic it is you think we, you know, we killed your childhood or whatever it is. We'll do it. We'll, we'll do, do it. it to it. So, uh, thank you for listening for, uh, issue 20, the back casting issue. I'm Junior alongside... Big B, Brian Adams. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. A little clap of thunder. For clap of thunder. Thank you for listening. We'll see you guys next week. Issue 21, where we discuss um, whatever the hell it is we discuss. Stuff. I forgot. We discuss stuff. Yeah, we discuss we'll, stuff. We'll, we'll be rejoined what? by Johnny Paparella, who doesn't really talk a lot, and Carrie, the camera dude. Yep. So join us for issue 21 next week. 
here on uh, the Spinner Rack. Good night. Peace.